For many centuries, humankind has dreamt of inner worlds. Ancient history has always told of the realm beneath our feet, a concave world complete with internal stars that houses an ecosystem long hidden from our own. Home to an ancient giant race far in advance of our own and prehistoric creatures and mystical energies. That gave rise to rumors of a race to the South Pole, being a race to the gateway of Agartha, the inner earth, featuring not only Nazi occultist Vril society members like Hitler, Himmler, Hess, but also U.S. Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, U-boat man Carl Unger, as well as the modern explorers like Dallas Thompson and Dr. Brooks Agnew. But after a bunch of expeditions to the end of the world, what did they find? Did they find any shred of evidence of a hidden advanced inner Earth civilizations? Or was there any encounter with underground creatures? Join us as we dig deep into the testimonies of great explorers and unravel the mystery of the inner Earth. The idea of the Earth having a meaningful center goes hand in hand with the planet being shaped like a ball. And we've known that we don't live on a disc for a long time. It's a myth that medieval folk thought the Earth was flat. This actually came from a mix of Victorian anti-religious propaganda and a misinterpretation of the stylized maps of the period. It was over 2200 years ago that the Greek polymath Eratosthenes made the first measurement of the distance around the Earth's sphere, and it's been clear ever since that it must have a center. However, this doesn't mean that early philosophers thought of Earth as we do today. Ancient Greek physics said that the world consisted of a series of concentric spheres of four fundamental elements. Earth, water, air, and finally, fire. In this oldest scientific picture, the center of the planet had to be solid, as air couldn't be inside the sphere of Earth. Clearly, the sphere of Earth wasn't completely surrounded by water, or there'd be no dry land. So there was thought to be a bit of the Earth sticking out, meaning there could be only one continent. As a result, the discovery of the Americas was, in fact, one of the first experimental scientific results, disproving the idea of a single continent and marking a significant step on the way to moving beyond ancient Greek scientific thinking. But unlike the idea of the Earth being only one continent, throughout history, there have been many people even scientists who were convinced that the Earth is actually hollow. Indeed, the idea of the Earth being entirely hollow has been popular in fiction and mythology since ancient times, also featuring in pseudoscience and conspiracy theories. Numerous writers have been inspired by the idea, not least Tarzan creator Edgar Rice Burroughs, with 1914 novel At the Earth's Core, Edgar Allan Poe, the author of the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket published 1838 and, most famously, Jules Verne, whose 1864 novel, A Journey to the Center of the Earth, has been adapted numerous times for both stage and screen. Thousands of contemporary theorists discuss what is commonly referred to as the greatest ever secret on internet forums. On YouTube, Videos claim that the satellite images on Google Earth have been altered to cover up the existence of the holes, while other videos claim the holes are there for all to see. Ancient Greeks, Tibetan Buddhists, and Christians all located their iterations of hell in caverns under the mantle. Pilgrims used to journey to Station Island off the coast of Koh Donegal, where they believed there existed an entrance to purgatory while the old legends of Mexico describe a mountain cave near Ojinago inhabited by devilish creatures from the way down deeps. Agree that most of those early beliefs were metaphorical or mythical in nature. But, as it turns out, the hollow earth theory is more sophisticated and scientifically backed than what was thought possible. And from mathematicians like Leonard Euler to the Medal of Honor winner Rear Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd, Junior have said that they believe the Earth is hollow as well. In all likelihood, the first person to scientifically theorize on hollow Earth was Halley's comet namesake, Edmund Halley. Halley's idea, proposed in 1692 to account for strange compass readings, postulates that Earth is composed of concentric spherical shells, 
each spins counter to the others and is surrounded by a solid core. Based on his magnetic field readings and his understanding of the sun's and moon's gravitational pull on Earth, he concluded that this model might explain any discrepancies in his measurements. Additionally, he hypothesized that there may have been light atmospheres between the shells, which may support life. Over the following several centuries, people built upon Halley's odd conception, replacing the complicated concept of Earth as a collection of layers with the idea of the Earth's interior as a single, infinitely colossal cavern. This new perspective on Earth's hollow interior is often paired with the idea of a small sun suspended in its core, which warms the planet's dark side and makes it habitable. In fact, notable personalities like Leonhard Euler and Sir John Leslie have advocated the existence of the hollow Earth. Leonhard Euler, the brilliant 18th century mathematician, was one of the people who took that notion and ran with it. Euler suggested that the Earth was hollow, no concentric shells, and that the Sun was located in the middle and had a diameter of 600 miles. The North and South Poles were apertures that led into his empty innards. And just like this, the concept of a hollow Earth has persisted over the years, regardless of its origin. One of the most famous hollow Earth theorists was a veteran of the 1812 Anglo-American War, John Sims. In his book Banvard's Folly, Paul Collins recounts the theory of concentric spheres and polar voids that preoccupied the soldier. Sims published a pamphlet in which he wrote, I declare that the Earth is hollow and habitable within, containing a number of solid concentric spheres, one within the other, and that it is open at the poles 12 or 16 degrees. He pledged his life to promoting his notion, boldly declaring, I am ready to explore the hollow. He toured the U.S. with a handmade wooden globe that opened out to reveal its secret layers. Converts, in ever-increasing numbers, began petitioning the government to finance his adventures. On March 7, 1822, Senator Richard Thompson presented a case to Congress that Sims be supplied with the equipment of two vessels of 250 to 300 tons for the expedition and the granting of such other aid as government may deem requisite. During the debate, it was suggested that the Committee for Foreign Relations become involved, as the trip may well bring Sims and his crew into contact with new races of interior people. But the motion was to fail. Seven further bills were presented to the House. Not one succeeded. Sims spent the rest of his life lecturing and lobbying for action. In May 1829, writes Collins, Sims died, believing right up to the end that the greatest discovery in human history had eluded his grasp. But still, today, men grasp. One of them is Rodney M. Clough, author of World Top Secret, Our Earth is Hollow. Like many believers, Clough is convinced by the accounts of others who claim to have already found and even visited the inner earth. Chief among them is Carl Unger, a German sailor said to be part of a 1943 U-boat expedition to the South Pole. The submarine apparently entered the hollow earth through an underwater passageway, and its crew were greeted by an advanced civilization in a place called Rainbow Island. Hitler was reportedly a believer, and some conspiracy theorists are convinced he escaped to the hollow earth at the end of the Second World War and is still there. Then there's Admiral Richard Byrd, a highly decorated U.S. naval officer who supposedly hushed up secret diary of a 1947 expedition to the North Pole, is believed to contain descriptions of a land full of lush lakes, greenery, and woolly mammoths. Ahead we spot what seems to be a city. This is impossible. Aircraft seems light and oddly buoyant. The controls refuse to respond. My God! Off our port and starboard wings are a strange type of aircraft. They are closing rapidly alongside. They are disc-shaped and have a radiant quality to them. They are close enough now to see the markings on them. It is a type of swastika. This is fantastic. Where are we? What has happened? I tug at the controls again. They will not respond. We are caught in an invisible vice grip of some type. 
Our radio crackles and a voice comes through in English with what perhaps is a slight Nordic or Germanic accent. The message is, Welcome Admiral to our domain. We shall land you in exactly seven minutes. Relax Admiral, you are in good hands. Another radio message received. We begin the landing process now, and in moments the plane shudders slightly and begins a descent as though caught in some great unseen elevator. The downward motion is negligible, and we touch down with only a slight jolt. I'm making a hasty last entry in the flight log. Several men are approaching on foot toward our aircraft. They are tall with blonde hair. In the distance is a large, shimmering city pulsating with rainbow hues of color. I do not know what is going to happen now, but I see no signs of weapons on those approaching. I hear now a voice ordering me by name to open the cargo door. I comply. The radio man and I are taken from the aircraft and we are received in a most cordial manner. We were then boarded on a small platform like conveyance with no wheels. It moves us toward the glowing city with great swiftness. As we approach, the city seems to be made of a crystal material. Soon we arrive at a large building that is a type I have never seen before. It appears to be right out of the design board of Frank Lloyd Wright, or perhaps more correctly, out of a Buck Rogers setting. According to his diary, Bird even revealed that he met the Master, the underground city's leader, who told him of his concerns about the surface world. Our interest rightly begins just after your race exploded the first atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. It was that alarming time we sent our flying machines, the Flugelrads, to your surface world to investigate what your race had done. You see, we have never interfered before in your race's wars and barbarity. But now we must, for you have learned to tamper with a certain power that is not for your man, mainly that of atomic energy. Our emissaries have already delivered messages to the power of your world, and yet they do not heed. It's more than probable that the Admiral reached the Earth's inner core. His radio announcement was never followed up in the press because the government obviously suppressed any further publicity covering his wondrous discovery 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Obviously, from his final entry, he wanted to share everything about his spectacular travels and life-changing experiences. December 30th, 1956. These last few years elapsed since 1947 have not been kind. I now make my final entry in this singular diary. In closing, I must state that I have faithfully kept this matter secret as directed all these years. It has been completely against my values of moral right. Now, I seem to sense the long night coming on, and this secret will not die with me. But as all truth shall, it will triumph, and so it shall. This can be the only hope for mankind. I have seen the truth, and it has quickened my spirit and has set me free. I have done my duty toward the monstrous military-industrial complex. Now, the long night begins to approach, but there shall be no end. Just as the long night of the Arctic ends, the brilliant sunshine of truth shall come again, and those who are of darkness shall fall in its light. For I have seen that land beyond the pole, that center of the great unknown. But by 1956, Washington was long committed to carrying out its sinister policy of secrecy, lies, and even murder to deprive Americans and all of humanity of the truth. Like President Eisenhower's prophetic warning in his 1961 farewell address, Byrd saw firsthand the monstrous military-industrial complex. If an intelligent civilization that only knows peace and compassion lives in the Earth's interior, and we were told the truth back then, it would have ended the Cold War and undoubtedly changed the fate of mankind forever. As an honest individual, Byrd must have suffered excruciating inner conflict and pain. Keeping what he knew secret from the rest of the world, it had to have eaten him up inside. Limited to speaking only in vague, lofty innuendo and unable to fully disclose what he'd seen, Perhaps that literally did kill him, as the American hero died less than two and a half months after his final diary entry. And there is no doubt that his reticence to disclose had much more to do with the tragic fate that befell his former boss, colleague, and friend James Forrestal than it did 
following orders as a military officer. There's even a retired colonel in the U.S. Air Force, Billy Fay Woodward, who claims that he and his twin sister, both hermaphrodites, were born in the hollow earth. Clough, for his part, tried to reach the hollow earth again. In 2003, he received an email from a man named Steve Curry, who'd recently inherited his family's travel firm that specialized in far-flung expeditions. Curry had once heard his father talking about the hollow earth and was familiar with Clough's book. They decided to plan a new trip. The scheme involved chartering a Russian nuclear icebreaker that was used to take tourists to the North Pole. Once the basics were worked out, they began recruiting members. Steve was charging about $26,000 for a spot on the ship, and he actually got about 40 people to put down the money. Before the voyage slated for August 2006, they chartered a plane to fly over the pole to locate the opening. But in April of that year, Steve found out he had six inoperable brain tumors. The result is, Steve died just before they were due to leave. Another member of the expedition, Dr. Brooks Agnew, was appointed as the new leader. After renaming the operation the North Pole Inner Earth Expedition and raising yet more funding, they planned for a summer 2014 departure. But a further unexpected disaster befell the team. Brooks Agnew resigned. He lost funding in his company after a major stockholder withdrew his money because of the planned expedition. The final straw was the death of another team member due to a plane crash. At that time, Clough began to wonder if mysterious powers were maneuvering against them. There seems to be some force that's trying to stop this happening. I think it's the international bankers. They don't want the inner earth people messing around with their slaves here on the outer world. The most logical way to put the hollow earth theory to rest would be to simply go there and find out. However, there is nothing simple about that idea. The aforementioned Kola Super Deep Borehole made it less than a third of the way through Earth's crust. More recent attempts to reach the mantle have involved drilling through the ocean floor where the crust is much thinner. However, that is a complicated and expensive undertaking, and so far all attempts have failed. In any case, the average hollow earth theorist would be unlikely to be a part of such an endeavor and would likely view any government-funded expedition with skepticism. However, there have been multiple attempts to locate the SEMS holes at the poles. In 2002, a strange guest appeared on a cult American late-night radio show about a near-death experience, during which he was granted knowledge of the Earth's interior. Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell, familiar names that had a reputation for exploring weird themes with fascinating guests. And their guest named Dallas Thompson, a former personal trainer who had spent his youth in Hawaii but now lived in Bakersfield, California. His life had changed forever following a terrible accident five years earlier. He'd been driving along Highway 58 during heavy rain when his car had aquaplaned, spinning four times, only to plunge backwards down a 250 feet drop. When Thompson was found, the roof of his blue Honda Accord had been crushed almost to the floor. The fireman who rescued him was amazed he hadn't been decapitated. As he'd been sitting, helpless, in the wreck, Thompson had had a vivid near-death experience. He claimed to have seen a light so bright that it burnt my eyes and made him legally blind, and to have had bizarre knowledge about the world poured into him. When he regained consciousness, he was convinced that the earth was hollow and had an opening at the North Pole. He'd come on coast to coast to discuss his mission to locate and explore it. There are cavern systems and caves that traverse the whole mantle. And because of the special atmosphere in the hole, living creatures were protected from pollutants and harmful rays. There were herds of mammoth and ancient tribes down there, the members of which lived to be around 1,700 years old. Perhaps most incredibly, Thompson revealed he'd secured funding to travel to the hole with a helicopter backpack called a Solo Trek which he'd used to descend into it. He even had a date for the trip, May 24, 2003. Over the next few months, news of Thompson's expedition spread. He began to receive emails from media companies keen to report the story and many more from both critics and admirers. The sprawling book he'd written 
which included his theories about Hollow Earth, began to sell. In December 2002, two months after his radio appearance, he posted a message on his Yahoo group page describing an inundation of over 5,600 emails every few days. He said his book, Cosmic Manuscript, had become a bestseller, but he was pulling it from sale. And then the most mysterious event of all took place. All of a sudden, Thompson disappeared, Cosmic Manuscript, and began raising funds for an expedition to the North Pole. After Thompson announced that he had received funding and would begin his trip on May 24, 2003, things immediately went awry. However, in December of 2002, he pulled his book from the shelves and, shortly afterward, he disappeared and was never heard from again. Adherents of Hollow Earth Theory, writing in the chat forum, couldn't help but speculate. Maybe there is something someone did not want him to find said one. It is quite a mystery, said another, before wondering if he had made his trip north. Maybe he's there. After all, the vanishing of Thompson remains a puzzle. Maybe Thompson is in hiding. Maybe government forces or evil bankers made him disappear, terrified of the world-changing truths he was about to unleash. Maybe he did journey to Hollow Earth, descend into it with his helicopter backpack, and is now prancing joyfully with the mammoths and the ancient tribes living in a paradise of pure air, warm climes, and abundant food that will sustain him for another 637 years. After all, whether the hollow earth is fact or fiction, the concept has captured the imaginations of generations, blurring the lines between fact and fiction and inspiring new theories, myths, and legends. While mainstream science remains steadfast in its assertion of a solid Earth, proponents of the theory point to seismic anomalies, underground structures, and alleged cover-ups as evidence of a hidden world beneath our feet. Whether one believes in hollow Earth or not, the debate serves as a reminder of the enduring human fascination with the mysteries that lie beneath the surface of our planet. In other words, even if we may never know what lies beneath our feet, the mystery of the hollow earth is sure to endure for centuries to come. Interestingly, there are allegedly several entrances to the kingdom of Aharta throughout the world. In India, there is an ancient belief, still held by some, in a subterranean race of serpent people who dwell in the cities Patala and Bhogavati. According to the legend, they wage war on the kingdom of Agartha. The Nagas, according to William Michael Motts, the Deep Dwellers, are a very advanced race or species with a highly developed technology. They also harbor a disdain for human beings whom they are said to abduct, torture, interbreed with, and even to eat. While the entrance to Bhogavati is somewhere in the Himalayas, believers assert that Patala can be entered through the well of Sheshna in Benares, India. 40 steps which descend into a circular depression to terminate at a closed stone door, which is covered in bas-relief cobras. In Tibet, there is a major mystical shrine also called Patala, which is said by the people there to sit atop an ancient cavern and tunnel system, which reaches throughout the Asian continent and possibly beyond. The Nagas also have an affinity with water, and the entrances to their underground palaces are often said to be hidden at the bottom of wells deep lakes and rivers. Gateways to the inner earth also exist in other spots such as Kentucky Mammoth Cave in South Central Kentucky, US, Mount Shasta, California, US, the Agharthian city of Telos is supposedly found beneath this mountain, Manaus, Brazil, Mato Grosso, Brazil, the city of Posid supposedly lies beneath this plain, Iguazu Falls, on the border between Brazil and Argentina, Mount Epomeo, Italy, Mongolia, the underground city of Xinhua is supposedly found beneath the border between Mongolia and China, Rama, India, beneath this surface city is a long lost subterranean city, some claim, also named Rama. Pyramid of Giza, Egypt, King Solomon's Mines, North and South Poles, even the Bermuda Triangle as a vortex point has a link to the inner world. The Bermuda Triangle, as you know, 
has long been shrouded in mystery and intrigue, with countless ships and aircraft purportedly disappearing within its bounds. While many scientists and researchers have offered rational explanations for these disappearances, ranging from natural phenomena to human error, there persists a subset of conspiracy theorists who believe in a more fantastical explanation that the Bermuda Triangle serves as a gateway to an inner world hidden beneath the Earth's surface. This theory posits that the Bermuda Triangle is not merely a region of the Atlantic Ocean prone to mysterious disappearances, but rather a portal to an otherworldly realm beneath the Earth's crust. Proponents of this idea suggest that this inner world is inhabited by advanced civilizations, possibly remnants of ancient civilizations like Atlantis or Lemuria, which are said to have existed in the distant past. One of the earliest proponents of this theory was American writer and inventor Richard Shaver in the 1940s and 1950s. Shaver claimed to have had encounters with subterranean beings whom he referred to as Deros, short for detrimental robots, and Teros, short for integrated robots, and he believed that the Bermuda Triangle was one of the entry points to their realm. Supporters of the inner world theory often point to the purported anomalies within the Bermuda Triangle as evidence of its supernatural nature. They cite reports of compass malfunctions, electronic failures, and strange cloud formations as indications of the presence of mysterious forces at work. Additionally, some claim that the disappearances within the Bermuda Triangle can be attributed to these beings from the inner world, either through abduction or through the use of advanced technology to cloak their activities. Despite lacking scientific evidence, the idea of the Bermuda Triangle as a gateway to an inner world continues to captivate the imaginations of conspiracy theorists and fiction writers alike. It has been popularized in various works of literature, films, and television shows, perpetuating its mystique in popular culture. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the debate surrounding the Bermuda Triangle and its alleged connection to an inner world remains firmly entrenched in the realm of speculation and conspiracy theory, leaving its mysteries open to interpretation and debate. While the mystery of Earth's center still has researchers scratching their heads, the ocean, covering more than 70% of our planet's surface, is a truly fascinating place. As we delve deeper into the depths of the sea, we uncover a world that is shrouded in mystery, darkness, and unimaginable beauty. The deep sea, an environment that exists beyond the reach of sunlight, remains largely unexplored and holds countless secrets waiting to be discovered. In this article, we will embark on a journey into the unknown and explore the mysteries of the deep sea. The deep sea, also known as the abyssal zone, refers to the part of the ocean that lies below 656 feet. This vast and inhospitable realm is characterized by extremely high pressure, low temperatures, and complete darkness. These conditions create a unique ecosystem that is vastly different from what we are used to on land or in shallower waters. Throughout history, humans have been captivated by the unknown, and the deep sea has always held a special allure. In the 19th and 20th centuries, several pioneers paved the way for our understanding of this enigmatic environment. Individuals such as William Beebe and Jacques Picard, among others, used submersibles and innovative technologies to venture into the deep sea for the very first time. One of the most fascinating aspects of the deep sea is its incredible biodiversity. Despite the harsh conditions, this underwater world is teeming with life. From bioluminescent organisms to peculiar deep sea creatures with adaptations that defy imagination, the deep sea holds countless species that are yet to be discovered. It is believed that the deep sea may even harbor species that are entirely new to science. Extremophiles, organisms that thrive in extreme environments, are also found in the deep sea. From hydrothermal vents to methane seeps, these unique ecosystems support life in the most unexpected places. Organisms such as tube worms, giant clams, and bacteria 
have adapted to survive in the extreme heat and chemical conditions surrounding these deep sea vents. Studying these extremophiles provides valuable insights into the potential for life beyond Earth. Advancements in technology have revolutionized our ability to explore the deep sea. With remotely operated vehicles and autonomous underwater vehicles, scientists can now probe the depths of the ocean with unprecedented precision and detail. These tools allow for the collection of samples, high-definition imaging, and the recording of vital data, expanding our understanding of this mysterious realm. Despite its remoteness, the deep sea is not immune to the impacts of human activities. Climate change, overfishing, deep sea mining, and pollution pose significant threats to this delicate ecosystem. As we gain a better understanding of the deep sea's importance and vulnerability, it becomes crucial to advocate for its conservation and sustainable use. As we continue to push the boundaries of exploration, the future of deep sea exploration looks promising. New technologies are being developed and collaborative efforts involving scientists from various fields are helping to unravel the mysteries of the deep. With each expedition into the abyss, we inch closer to unlocking the secrets of this vast and mysterious world. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.